Hey everybody, Dr. Ben Edwards here. It is story time. I've got a book I'm going to talk about and I've got a lot of books behind me. This is my library in my clinic. Um, so why do I have all these books? It's because I didn't learn it all in medical school. Imagine that. <laughs> now, when I graduated medical school, which is UT Houston, 2002, I'm an MD. Um, I thought I learned it all, but then after about seven years of conventional, or 10 years actually of conventional medical practice, um, I discovered I didn't learn it all. I learned how to just manage disease, manage symptoms, and you do that with a pharmaceutical pen and prescription pad. Doing it that way, though, is a temporary relief, but sh but it cuts your life short, <laughs> and you suffer in between. We die younger and suffer more than anybody else and spend the most money doing it. That's what I learned to do in medical school. Someone, I think, decided for us that Americans just aren't going to take responsibility and do the right thing. Get up and move, eat real food, get some sunshine, be at peace. So if we're not going to do that, let's just treat symptoms with pharmaceuticals. That's what was decided for you. And actually this goes back to 1910. Abraham Flexner, you can go look this up, the Flexner Report. So Carnegie and Rockefeller get together and they hire this guy. He's an education expert. And they send him out to survey the country and all the medical school curriculum that's out there because there were homeopathic medical schools back in the day. In the late 1800s, there were more homeopathic medical schools in this country than allopathic medical schools. Thousands of licensed homeopathic physicians in this country prior to 1910. So Flexner went around the country, found all these different curriculum. There was naturopathic medical school, herbalist schools, chiropractic schools, um, traditional Chinese medicine, Native American medicine, Ayurvedic medicine from India. Anyways, he came back and summarized it all and said, hey, there's too much chaos out there. We need to standardize this to allopathic is what he recommended. And allopathic at the time was just petroleum-based byproduct chemical derivatives that they started to experiment with. But basically, after 100 years, we've developed all these drugs that treat symptoms. High blood sugar, it's a symptom. Acid in your esophagus, that's a symptom. High blood pressure, it's a symptom. Tumors, symptom. All these things are symptoms, guys. And doctors get learned to use a pharmaceutical to suppress that symptom instead of deal with the root cause. So anyways, that was the education I got. Once I found out that produced the worst outcomes and there was another way, an alternative to that conventional model, I went and learned it. And I'm still learning it. And a lot of these books have a lot of what I've learned. So I'd like to share with you today and in future videos some of these books because they're really cool. There's some amazing stuff happening pre-1950, 1960s when all the chronic drugs started coming in for chronic disease. Pre-1950, doctors um, had a little more experience and they had other tools in the toolbox and they had some tradition they could pull from and they had um, a different way of thinking where they had more freedom to go experiment and try this and try that and, and look at herbs and look at different things. So there was a doctor in North Carolina Reedsville, North Carolina, in the 1950s. His name, Frederick Klinner. And this book, it's called Primal Panacea. It's by Dr. Thomas Levy. And Thomas Levy goes back and summarizes a lot of Frederick Klinner's work. And it's amazing the number of studies in this book. I um, mean, I'll go through some of them. I want to highlight just a few. So this, this book's all about vitamin C. And Dr. Klinner used vitamin C intravenously, high dose. We're talking grams, 5 grams, 10 grams, 20 grams, 50 grams. High dose vitamin C intravenously and intramuscularly, shots in the muscle. There was one study that showed 327 out of 327 patients were completely symptom-free from shingles in three days, administering high-dose vitamin C. Another study, seven out of seven rheumatic fever patients symptom-free um, with high-dose vitamin C. And then this is a big one. This is 60 out of 60 poliomyelitis patients in three days symptom-free. Um, I'm going to quote exactly from that journal so you can go look this up because these were respected medical journals this was published. So this was the title of the study, The Treatment of Poliomyelitis and Other virus, Viral Diseases with Vitamin C, Southern Medicine and Surgery Journal, 1949, July. Amazing. You can go back to that, that journal and look at his publication and read the case reports. So that's just polio. And you can see the fine print here. This is one page. There's um, phenol poisoning, pneumonia, pesticide poisoning, pertussis, that's whooping cough, uh, paraquat poisoning. That's just the P's. <laughs> I mean, you can go through the whole alphabet and it's listed. So here's the N's, nickel poisoning, nitrogen dioxide poisoning, 
um, nitrate toxicity. Here's the M's, malaria, measles, mumps, mushroom poisoning, mononucleosis, mercury poisoning, leprosy. Each one of these has five to 12 different published studies talking about using vitamin C. And you can go through the whole alphabet. I'm not going to do that today. The point of this book was to bring forth some old, 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 100-year-old, 80-year-old published studies from doctors pre-1950 that were using vitamin C high dose. It's amazing. And what that does, it's an antioxidant. How poisons and toxins disrupt normal physiology is they rob electrons from your cells. Vitamin C is an electron donor, so it's going to donate back those robbed electrons. That's what antioxidants do, guys. But even better than vitamin C, you have antioxidant enzymes built into your, engineered into your physiology. What that means is you have your own electron donors built in. These enzymes that just pour and donate electrons. And then they go recycle themselves and they're right back in the fight to donate more electrons so that you can deal with oxidative stress. Pretty amazing. But when you need a little extra help, finding a clinic that does IV vitamin C can be very helpful. See you next time.